Hi guys and welcome back to the Genesis Designs and Model Craft Bench and tonight I'm going to do a quick snip review rather than a quick inbox. Uh, so this is the new tool, brand new, released out Airfix de Havilland Mosquito B16 as you can see by reading the box. Um, and I decided I was going to do a quick inbox on it because it's, it's quite an interesting kit to me but I decided to upgrade to a quick snip. Um, I'm going to Cut, cut some of the parts off and pull it together and have a play with it because simply speaking uh, my recent Vulcan review garnered a few comments both online and off as it were um, about various sort of quality control and fit problems that other people have had that don't appear to be present on the kit that I featured um, and that kit was just a standard straight off the model shop shelf kit there's nothing you know wasn't special in any way so I can't prove that obviously so I thought this time this isn't even been opened so I've picked this up from Antics of Bristol thanks go out again to Andrew Hills for supplying me with a kit for a sensible price retail price is 21 or 22 pounds I believe should be easily available for around 20 pounds um, which doesn't seem too bad on the face of it but anywho Let's get on with it, we'll have a look at it and we'll have a snip around and see what we think. So, opening the box, I have physically opened the box but I haven't opened the bags yet so here it is, completely virgin, instructions, come on fingernails do your thing, and decals, put the box over here out of the way, instructions this side, so let's get this open and have an initial look. Now I'm hoping that anyone who's interested enough to watch this will have probably already watched the video featuring the guy who designed the kit and maybe even some other reviews. I have not watched any other reviews. I possibly, it could be argued that maybe I should watch other reviews before I do my own, but I, I want to present to you, to you what I think of the kit, not a mishmash of what everyone else thinks. So here we go, first one. Frame A, fuselage halves clearly and the engine nacelle. The so the B16 Mosquito was one of the final variants and featured the two stage supercharged Merlin engine um, variant 72 and upwards. So it's around about 1400 horsepower. And uh, the main identifying factor for that is this longer nacelle because the addition of an extra stage to the supercharger on the back of the engine um, entails the need for. A bit of extra length obviously um, the other the pro probably even more obvious indicator for the, the twin stage mosquitoes is this sort of much much longer carburetor intake underneath the cell there but yeah two stage Merlin engines on this so it's quite interesting to me that Airfix chose to model this aircraft as a twin stage one rather than the massively more common earlier mosquitoes but it's welcome nonetheless and perhaps um, they'll bring out the other model later. So this plastic looks a little harder than usual. Uh, it's a slightly different colour. The detail so far actually really nicely done. Um, that cockpit sidewall detail there is super nice. Really, really, really nice. Yeah, I like that. A little bit of detail there, which is obviously the top of the sort of wing root area. The wing on the Mosquito does go clean through the aircraft. It's a one piece wing. So next we've got conveniently enough frame B, this is the wings clearly. Now being uh, made from plywood there are minimal panel lines, there certainly isn't much in the way of sort of rivet and fastening detail, uh, which is fine, there isn't supposed to be. And it can make things awkward if you're one of these people who likes to rely on pre-shading and the like. There's not really anything there to pre-shade. So here we've got some, by Airfix standards, razor-like trailing edges here. That is really my main bugbear with Airfix kits nowadays is that the trailing edges are still pretty thick in some cases, but these look to be fairly sensible straight from the off. And again, we've got some nice moulded in detail in the wheel wells there. Moving on to the slightly smaller ones, frame C, um, just some smaller details, a bit of a 
potentially some fuel tank ends there bomb bay parts, some actual bombs, these are probably 500 pounders hopefully it will tell us in the instructions moving on we've got a paddle bladed propeller a couple of different exhaust variants there I'm thinking I'm not a mosquito spurt okay uh, these are two parts okay should be six stub exhaust on this undercarriage legs wheels got separate hubs to save a bit of effort with masking or detail painting and one of the things the designer spent a lot of time talking about note there that that You've got two lots of closed wheel bay covers, one of which is very obviously says mask on it, and that's designed to be clipped into position whilst you're painting the aircraft, or the model I should say, to mask off the wheel bay, which is a nice touch. Indeed. And that's, yeah, these aren't the same. Mostly the same parts, but a couple of internal parts there as well little slipper tanks for the fuel for the wings and the last one is this tiny one here a solitary crew member and um, mostly cockpit area parts and a retracted tail wheel so so far so good it actually looks very neatly moulded some nice detail throughout everything there quite happy with that Let's check out the canopies now the major difference with the B-16 to any other two-stage Merlin variant of the Mosquito is that the B-16 had a pressurised cockpit um, enabling it to fly as high as 35,000 feet which in World War II was pretty damn high and those are beautifully done transparencies they're very air fixed, the framing is slightly on the pronounced side but they're again very air fixed, very very clear bright shiny transparencies that is a lovely bit of work there I particularly like these wing tips being moulded in clear like this makes it well it removes any need to blend the, the wing tip lights which is a bonus so moving on to the instructions then bog standard A4 paper very small bit of history there mentions that the um, Mark 16 could carry the £4,000 cookie bomb, which was originally obviously developed for the Lancaster, and it was able to carry that because of not only the more powerful engines, but the, the fact that it had bulged bomb bay doors, which gave the, the bomb bay, made the bomb bay physically big enough to fit the cookie in it. So here we go with construction then. So he's, there are scrap views added throughout to show the actual exact angles you need to have everything. You can see from this diagram that the floor isn't necessarily completely level throughout so this rear bulkhead in particular is not actually at 90 degrees <clears throat> but as we've come to expect from airfix you've got your wing spars that are moulded in there to help give strength um, to the wing joints multi-part pilot seat there is a deck off the, for the instrument panel And a little bit of very very subtle colour <laughs> on on here. These parts that are, I've got a bit of green shading on them, like this interior here. So yes, that is a replication of the fuel tanks there. It's possible that later we might see some photo reconnaissance versions come out. Obviously, this same basic airframe was used in the photo reconnaissance role. I think probably some of the parts are already in the kit for it but people who know more about mosquitoes than me will, uh, will be able to spot that hopefully so another thing that the designer talked a lot about was using part B6 as a jig to assemble the undercarriage um, I'm slightly bemused by this whole thing because part B6 is the wing okay the actual wing it's something that an experienced modeler is going to do anyway um, but I suppose the nice thing about this is that the designers taken the time to physically write in the instructions when you're assembling these undercarriage legs plug them into the wing because it will help you with alignment you're going to get everything spaced right and it's going to hold the parts in place while your glue dries as I say more experienced modelers won't need to be told this 
but less experienced modelers this this is going to help them learn the trade so to speak we go with the separate wheel hubs so the separate wheel hubs will make it easier to mask but we've got two piece wheels and tyres anyway which means that that block tread is going to be difficult to retain whilst sanding that seam line yeah two part exhaust so you've got six stack exhaust here and again the carriers for the exhaust um, stacks uh, are labelled it's moulded in so that you know which end is the front and which way up they go once they're assembled it's just idiot proofing it a bit likewise the, the clear wingtip and navigation light assembly has got a P in it for port which is left if you really wanted to idiot proof it you should have put an L on it because not everybody knows their port and starboard do they carrying on here got some neat little details in the in the cell there for the undercarriage just a couple of bulkheads to finish that off there's that long carburetor intake I mentioned and you've got these sort of um, air outlets as well on the side of the nacelle there which is another thing that only the two speed engines had this is what I'm talking about with the mask so this panel was designed and it's already got cutouts there to fit over the fixings for the open undercarriage doors so rather than having to mess about trying to get tape or blue tack or something to fill that aperture whilst you spray the underside you can simply clip you don't have to glue it clip that piece of plastic into place and that will just protect everything beautifully for you and that is a very nice touch again not wishing to diss any of the efforts of this guy but there are closed door options included in the kit and again experienced modelers will pick up on that and use them you just cut these apertures out yourself and use them to mask it but it is still a nice touch that they're in the kit and labelled for use as such again with the alignment aids on the radiator faces just to save you putting them in back to front and causing yourselves issues with the wing fit and here we are final attaching the undercarriage here and it is nice that they have deliberately thought ahead and, and made it so that you can fit these legs after construction slash painting um, with undercarriage units of this nature they very often have to be kind of built in situ as you as you're making the model up which again makes for some awkwardness with handling and masking and what have you as you're going through painting and deckling and although they're no doubt absolutely sturdy enough the sort of handling you do while you're building things tends to break things quite easily so it is nice that you can add those after construction without modification here again is another one of the designers helpful helpful tips highlighted here only put the glue on the highlighted area to enable that propeller to still be able to spin if you don't want the propeller to spin then put glue elsewhere as well obviously same again this is for the other wing using the wing under surface as a jig to create that under, undercarriage structure and this is all repetition of what we just looked at but for the other side again this is something that most manufacturers don't really bother with to completely separate separate out construction of left and right the way this is done here there's your starboard right hand wing tip light um, it's not normally done it would normally be some you know you'd have a, an, an extra set of numbers or just build two or something like that so again for the beginner or the less experienced modeler I shouldn't say beginner um, this just takes all the guesswork out of it for the sake of a few extra sheets of, of paper it's, it's again quite welcome I think literally going through all the same stuff but for the right hand side here we go we're on to the Bombay so that's your bul bulged Bombay door assembly here you there is an obviously an open Bombay option as well you've got your bomb cradles there and again it's pointing out idiosyncrasies to, to enable correct construction so this forward sort of ladder part has got a round attachment pin and the aft one has a square pin and you know you could be forgiven for saying well I can see that with my eyes but it's nice that it's been pointed out it's taken all the guesswork out and you've got your bomb racks and then you go in there with four bombs so there's no cookie included in the kit which 
It's vaguely disappointing, I suppose, but if anybody who's got any Lancaster kits kicking about, there's going to be a cookie or two hanging around in those. And finally then, slipper tanks for the outer wings. Add your pilot, should you wish to. And then add your canopy. It has separate side pieces because the side window area on, on the aircraft, these wouldn't have been openable in the same way the earlier aircraft were so they were bulged out so the crew could see out a bit better downwards um, and they're separate parts to enable that to be moulded accurately. Two different uh, tail plane options, obviously the one with the cut off of the top of the tyre so it will fit for the retracted version. And on to the decal or the marking options, we've got a number 571 squadron aircraft in the archetypal late war camouflage ocean grey dark green over medium sea grey this one's got some nice sort of PRU blue spinners which is quite attractive based at Oakington in Cambridgeshire September 1944 little uh, note from the designer there uh, that when this aircraft was photographed it just returned from repairs at Hatfield which is where the aircraft were made um, and this is evidenced by a replacement panel in grey on the left upper wing here and the no step markings above both radiators have been repainted in what appears to be ocean grey or I should say the, the area where the no step markings would normally be the spinners appear to be a mid blue not unlike photo reconnaissance blue nice little mark. note there and then the second option 109 squadron Royal Air Force Witten, Cambridgeshire 944. This one is the sort of semi standard bomber, bomber camo. Again, ocean grey and dark green, but this time over black. Um, it's a scheme that I find very attractive, but I'm sure many, many others don't. But yeah, nicely done as ever. The actual decal sheet itself. Standard airfix, which is the same as saying extremely competent, I think, to be fair. Um, enough stencil detail to be interesting, but not enough to make me throw it all in the bin. And instrument panel, decal, some nice silver ones there, it'd be nice to see what they're for. Let's have a look in a second. And yeah, standard markings, very, very nice little sheet, not complicated at all. It doesn't need to be, does it? Now I'm going on the hunt to see what decal number six is for. I know nobody else is bothered. <laughs> I know. Mystery of sold. Decal number seven, not decal number six. And they go on the spinners. Three on each. Lovely stuff. Okay, let's do some snip snipper rooing and see how it all fits together without any more preamble or messing around. So I'll just sort of concentrate on these main parts myself some tape and let's see what we get I will be doing a basic tools video soon for the book of Genesis um, um, and I'll talk a bit more about nippers but I use Tamiya nippers I do have some some of the considerably more expensive DSPAIEOU VW uh, whatever they're called nippers but uh, although they're very nice I did very quickly come back to the Tamiya ones there's an element of personal preference there sorry right then first things first let's get this fuselage together so take the spruce tubs off and make sure I'm showing myself to the camera here Completely standard spruce tubs, they don't project into the uh, joining faces at all. No complication there. I'll put my other light on. I don't know whether it's 
entirely just because I'm getting old, but I find I need a lot of light these days. So many spruce tubs, goodness me. Okay. That has to be a record. So I'm not seeing any sort of major mould floors here, I'm not seeing sink marks or awkward mould seams that are going to influence fit here. I'm just going to trim this a little on the sides where I've took those nubs off, absolutely standard. And again here where they've come off that face I'll just take the worst of that off otherwise it'll probably impinge upon the slots because they're usually quite a precise fit okay and there's one you missed, there's two you missed earlier brilliant, All right so cockpit floor Bombay roof whichever way you want to look at it I suppose it depends from which direction you look at it so that just simply slots in there now obviously there be uh, bulkheads and what have you on this when you build it up fully I'm just going for a quick look to see how the thing fits together so I'm not putting those on also it'll make the video way too long Well, there you go. So this one's not that tight of a fit into the slots, which honestly is a good thing because when they're very, very tight in the slots, it can, it can actually cause fit problems sometimes. But what I found with the, the bow fit that I am working on as well is that the fit was pleasant before I painted anything. And actually, just the act of putting the inter internal colour on on the interior parts was enough to make the fit of those swing spars really, really noticeably tight, which shows you just how just how neat the tolerances are on these kits these days. And there you go. There are no issues with that whatsoever. You can barely even see that seam even without glue although the fact that my camera won't focus probably helps quite too impressive wings here they are off as well okay I'll probably just fast forward some of this that's why I'm not talking very much so take those little bits of attachment stubs off these parts. Now with these airfix kits you, you very very often find that there'll be a mould seam along the bottom or the top edge of the wing parts here. This one looks as though there isn't. I get my vision aids and have a proper look. Oh no there is. A, yeah. So the mould seam literally runs along this corner. Just I can see it now that I've got my 
magnifier on. And you quite often find that the fit isn't quite perfect until you take that off. So we'll have a look in a minute. But for whatever reason, it always does seem to be along that top edge. I have induced a bit of damage to that leading edge by the way I've cut the spruce dub off. Not bothered because I'll just fill it with super glue, but be careful of that. Same here, it's almost it's very, very subtle actually on this kit. The mould seam just does run along that edge. So note how those trailing edges which looked quite nice are pretty thin before now that you've got your two halves together that's actually ended up being a, a fairly hefty trailing edge and it's got that thing going on where the internal surfaces aren't quite at the right angle so that when you put the joint together there appears to be a gap right at the trailing edge if you just squeeze it here you end up with a big gap along the trailing edge so you have to remember to really just squeeze right at the end the other way to influence that is inside the model just chamfer these corners away a little bit so that the contact point between the two parts ends up only being right at the trailing edge um, and looking at that we've got some where are my tweezers? got some fairly pronounced ejector pins here and on this piece they're protruding yeah that isn't going to help so ejector pins absolutely nothing wrong with them they have to be there but they often have this little bit of flash around them you see me trimming that off which will affect the fit unless you're using a lot of liquid cement because that will tend to melt them but if you're using CA that will affect the fit quite badly on this one you got the flash again on this outer one just trim it see there you go and the middle one but the inner one it's actually quite pronounced and raised as you can see I'm trimming it off you're talking about maybe a quarter of a mil something like that but on a part like this that's enough so yeah as I was saying with the the point where these taper not quite the right way so you end up with a gap along the back you need to scoop out material so you only leave a thin edge for the glue to fit for the glue for the two parts to fit together and that way they'll come together properly because none of this flat area here is getting in the way and influencing that fit bearing in mind we're going to be thinning these down anyway I'm hoping that the camera will let me show you this I can't tell from the small picture but hopefully you can see how this it's not literally a gap but you can definitely see that join all the way down there they're going to want thinning anyway so whilst you're doing that that's when you just chamfer all of this away and then you end up with both a thinner trailing edge and a trailing edge that doesn't have a big joint down the middle of it a big visible joint But if you don't want to thin it and you don't want to chamfer it and muck about then all I'll say is just when you glue it use something like extra thin and hold 
the joint together right at the very back edge and that will minimise the issue but it is definitely there. And filling and sanding joints like that along training edges is a, is a noise, so. Not everybody's going to be bothered by the presence of that seam anyway, I, I get that, I'm, I'm just I'm just pointing it out. Okay, in every other way they've snipped together beautifully, there's no issues there with um, the, the locating pins not fitting each other and things like that, the, the alignment is, is spot on. And there we go. Slot straight onto that spar. No messing. Again, it's not as tight a fit as the bow foot is. These aren't just going to hold on by themselves. But if I hold everything into position, you can see that that bore a wing joint is not half bad. And just the addition of the liquid glue down that seam is going to do most of the work of, of removing it or making it invisible. A nice touch here that I can see is these webs if you like that space the thickness of the wing are angled slightly inwards and that's a really it's a great design choice because you so often get I don't know if it's obvious from here that these are angled inward to make a sort of inverse V. That means that the entirety of this joint isn't affecting the fit between the wing and the fuselage. The fuselage being curved at this point, if these were flat and if there were any misalignment then that would cause the wing to not fit nicely. But they're not so it doesn't interfere with it regardless which is great. It's a nice touch and it's some, another thing that I will often do when things like that are flat and flush is I'll scoop them out so that they don't get in the way of a good fit. And there you go. That's pretty damn decent. Slap a tail plane in, see how that goes. What's this one? Now here at the end of this tail plane, these two parts, this is sat quite proud of the elevator balance tab so I, I would probably I will scrape this out and thin this so that that sits flush like the top does just get rid of this spruce stub It's quite proud, it needs thinning down inside so that that uh, fits properly. Yeah, and these are designed to interlock inside the fuselage. Thus. Sort of creates the roof of the tail wheel bay as well. What I like about that sort of idea though is, as it should show you in a minute when I put this top half on and it'll make it tighter, is it holds the alignment of the tail planes nicely as long as it all fits together properly, which it absolutely does. And this one is the same, it's a little bit thicker at the tip than the elevator is. I'll make sure I've got these the right way up, I suppose. That's a half. <clears throat> there. Slide in together and holding each other straight. The rudder then again, a little bit of a thick trailing edge, it's not terrible. Uh, 
unfortunately if you choose to try and do anything about it you will lose some of this fabric rendition if you're not careful that isn't just going to hold itself in place but oh it is a bit but there you go that's how that fits so lovely jubbly there you go I think there's not a single sink mark or anything in evidence anywhere here that looks tall shady there's no flash the seam lines are not invading the fit of the wings particularly so you could probably just forget about it and fit them I think you'll agree that pops together very nicely indeed it'd be nice if the wings would sit a little tight, tighter than they are let's try taping this a bit to Tighten it up. Not really helping. Yeah. By by comparison, the bow fit. There's no glue involved there. That's the spars in this are quite. A, they're not tight, but they're a good precise fit. Finally, then I'll just grab and sell this mightn't work out too well without the internal bulkheads being in there but I'll give it a look This plastic is a little bit less, um, it's a bit less like plasticine. Um, it's an often made complaint about Airfix kits, the plastic that they tend to be made from is quite similar to soap. This doesn't seem to be too bad. I don't know which nacelle I've cut out. This one. Oh yes, that works. So without any um, internal matter and without even really being cleaned up properly. Let's well, just straight into position. You see that the addition of glue and a minimal amount of pressure closes up that back end beautifully to the point where a little bit of a sand would probably sort that out. The joint between the wing and the nacelle itself is nigh on perfect, shouldn't need any work at all. Uh, that I've got a bit of a sprue stub in the way there which is causing that gap but here this side again a bit of glue and a tiny bit of pressure and it's gone beautiful yeah. so there you go a quick snip look at the new tool Airfix Mosquito 16 um, and hopefully if you've managed to wade all the way through it with me you'll agree that it's really very impressive indeed um, I like to think I, I I tend to think really that anybody who is desperately interested in this kit has probably already bought it um, but if you're sitting on the fence because you think 22 quid seems a lot of money for a 70 second scale mosquito and I can understand why somebody might think that um, I'm going to say, having looked at it and done this little little test look, I'm I'm quite happy. It's it's beautifully moulded. I think personally that the plastic looks to be a little bit better than what we've seen before. The surface finish, which uh, anybody who's been around my channel and my reviews for any length of time will know, has long been a bugbear of mine. I'll take. I'll take the chalk like plastic but for goodness sake give me a smooth surface the the pebble dash finish on a lot of newer airfix kits is just it's not even funny um, it's not there on this this is smooth it's smooth enough that as bad as my OCD is I don't think I would sand this before painting I think I'd just go straight in 
and trust me my OCD is pretty bad there you go I think we'll agree that this fits beautiful really nicely molded some lovely details in there uh, obviously I've not shown those to to their uh, advantage particularly during the course of this video but some very fine details really nicely molded really beautiful finish the surface finish is very very nice as I say no sink marks no short shots no flash it's top notch it is well well worth what they're asking for it in my opinion and uh, yeah I think I'll leave it at that so I'm very happy I think this is a lovely looking kit I'm, uh, I will finish building this because I can't do anything else with it now <laughs> it's got, I, can't, I can't sell it because I've took it all out of the bags um, but yeah very very impressed I think great job by excuse the pronunciation if it's wrong but Paraj Mitt um, I think this was the first kit that he designed himself from start to finish and uh, it's a hugely impressive effort lovely touches on the instructions um, and, and the inclusion of the masks and the alignment aids and all of that for for less experienced modelers that is an absolute godsend and i've seen airfix of moving towards this style of play for a little while now um anyway the, the inclusion of that that sort of thing in the vulcan i noticed and indeed the beaufort to a lesser extent so really great stuff and it just shows that they're working on doing what they need to do for their target market which at the end of the day is not necessarily the weather-beaten haggard old rivet counters like ourselves um so yeah i think 22 pounds is extremely reasonable you are going to be able to put this up for 20 quid without even trying anyway um so if you were worried about it then yeah crack on go buy one um can i think of anything i'd like to, i'd like to see the inclusion of a four thousand pounder i think that would have been a completely relevant thing to do i think there are parts there there's a canopy that's not going to get used so there are parts there that I mean that you could if so inclined build a photo reconnaissance bird from this kit but you'll need to get your own decals obviously um there you go so yeah i recommend this i like it i like it a lot so on that note i'll leave you um oh actually just before i go the there's gonna be a slight lack of videos for a few weeks i'm um i'm caught up with videos to where i'm at with the tornado build I have got I will be shooting one this week uh, for the Beaufort scale an update on that which will be absolutely riveting trust me uh, and the next tornado video will probably take another couple of weeks before I can bring one out so there'll be a bit videos will be a bit thin on the ground for a few weeks but um stick with it they will be coming okay anyway that's enough for that bye mosquito I love it thanks again to Andy at Antics for getting this one out to me um uh, so until next time Look after yourselves, look after each other and Genesis out.